And Senate Democrat Catherine Cortez Masto, who's in a uh, tight race in Nevada, says that it, quote, doesn't address the root problems that make college unaffordable. So, Laura, was this move, and as, uh, you know, Stephen Ratner called it, the, the biggest uh, layout of money through an executive order in the history of the country? Was it a mistake? Well, I think the biggest layout of money is when Republicans give tax cuts to the wealthy, and we don't talk about that as a giveaway. But here's what I will say, Martha. As the daughter of two grocery workers who had to take out student loans and who paid them off, I won't benefit from this, but I sure am glad he's doing it. And I think you'll see a lot of working class parents feeling that way, who worked hard so their kids could go to school. And it's not a zero-sum game. Just because we're talking about debt for people that are battled with it. Working class kids that have done right, that have been able to go to college, doesn't mean that if you're a plumber or you're in a trade, you're not going to benefit from well, other Laura, Biden policies. About that. that infrastructure deal is going to build careers. It's going to help uh, well, working people to see the build of trades, retire that out you know, with a pension. Really These well, Laura, are the types you, of things me, you got to look at the me, full you, picture. You and there, so let I think let that it's Laura, really important. Okay, hold on. Oh, sorry. I thought that Gianna was going a little way, so I thought I'd go too. I just wanted to, no, I wanted to you, you got a number of things in there. So I want to go back to the first thing that you said, which was your parents' efforts to pay for your college education. So how are we sending the right message to Americans when we say that if you take out a loan, you don't have to pay it back? Here's what we'll say. Education's gotten too expensive and the crippling debt is stopping people like my mom from having grandchildren. I know she'd love to see my brother's debt forgiven uh, so that she, he can possibly have another kid. And these are the types of decisions that American families are making. And so my Republican dad agrees. My Democratic mom agrees. This type of thing is not bad for America to allow middle class families to move forward. And by no means is it the only policy that the Biden administration is advancing. You know, everybody's going to be happy that uh, like seniors, when Medicare is negotiating prescription drug prices and saving them cash there, when their energy and their health care costs go down uh, because of that okay. Joe Manchin, it's Joe just Biden a very, bill. You know, it's a very I think you, gotta, you um, can't look at this as one yeah. thing. you got to look at the full package, well, and that's I'm what voters will do in the fall. Of the that's why Biden's to approval ratings are going that up. The government will pay for everything <sighs> for you. And we, we have to leave it there, but it's a very different America than I think my parents and probably your parents grew up in, um, where we're going to try to cover these costs. And I, I, I just don't know where it ends right. is, is the point. But Gianna and, and, and Laura, I gotta really leave there. Upset. Yeah, th yeah, thank you. Thank you both for what being here What about the PPP today. loans that they forgave for Matt Gates well, for, a, yeah, for that Charlie was a Chris very, That was a unique circumstance in the middle of the pandemic, which is now over, um, according to the CDC. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for being here. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, my God. Best Fox News clip of the year by far. I love that. That right there, my friends, is what happens when you confront Republicans about their hypocrisy. They have no idea how to respond. It's like deer in headlights. She hadn't even thought about this. Wait, am I maybe a hypocrite for justifying PPP loans that were forgiven after I spent the last couple of min minutes bashing student loan forgiveness? It hadn't even crossed her mind. And let's go to an instant replay because you can see how frantic she was. So as soon as Matt Gates' name was mentioned, her eyes got bigger. You could almost hear her thinking, oh shit, what the fuck am I going to say? She put her head down trying to think of some way that she can justify this. But the best that she had was, oh, that was a unique circumstance. Really? That's the best that you have? I mean, I don't blame you because you only had a couple of seconds to come up with some sort of rationalization for why that was good and this is bad when it comes to student debt. But you just said a minute prior, quote, so how are we sending the right message to Americans when we say that if you take out a loan, you don't have to pay it back? You just said that. Your words, not mine. But all of a sudden, oh, that was a unique circumstance. Mm, so good. So good. I will never not enjoy exposing these hypocrites. So I've done this multiple times this week, but we have to do it again. It's that good. Prager U called canceling student debt, quote, bailing out irresponsible behavior after having their $700,000 PPP loan forgiven in its entirety. Steven Crowder tweeted again about student debt, saying blue collar workers are paying for the degrees of doctors and lawyers, but he doesn't seem too concerned about blue collar workers paying for his $70,000 PPP loan that was forgiven. 
Ben. Ben Shapiro said, don't take out debt if you're unable to pay it off after having his $20,000 PPP loan forgiven. Once again, interest in all. And probably my favorite hypocrite of the week, Marjorie Taylor Greene says student loan forgiveness is, quote, completely unfair, despite the fact that her company had loans worth $183,504 forgiven by daddy government. And if you go to Twitter and you look at what Steven Crowder and Ben Shapiro are saying about student loans, everybody is replying with screenshots showing that their PPP loan was forgiven, but they're not addressing it. Why? Because they're hypocrites and there's no way that you can rationalize their behavior. There's no way. They're just straight hypocrites and they're embarrassed probably. So it's smart that Ben Shapiro hasn't tweeted about this since he was exposed for having a PPP loan that was forgiven. But Steven Crowder is still continuing to tweet through it, even though we all see through him. They have no fucking shame, but every single time they denounce student debt cancellation, save these screenshots in your phone of their PPP loan that was forgiven and throw it in their face. You don't have to say anything, just reply with the screenshot and they know that they're hypocrites. They know that we see through them. Now, one other thing that that Fox uh, News host said was, it's a very different America that my parents and your parents grew up in suggesting that, oh, it's so weird that we're forgiving the debt of these students. Now, it's bizarre that she said that because it's actually true. It is a very different America that her parents grew up in. And that America was uh, a world where tuition wasn't as expensive. And when you took out a loan, you could easily pay it back by getting essentially any job. You could work at Taco Bell and pay off your loan relatively easily. I've had these conversations with my professors who are older in their 70s, and they explained to me how easy it was to pay off their debt. They took out student loans. They paid it off within a couple of months because at that time, you can get a job basically anywhere and make a sufficient income to support an entire family. But nowadays, that has changed. The economic circumstances have changed drastically. And we're not talking about wealthy people getting debt relief, as was the case with PPP loans. We're talking about working class Americans. 87% of the individuals who are receiving debt forgiveness as part of Biden's plan they make less than $75,000 per year. We're talking about working class people who haven't been able to purchase homes, purchase cars, move out of their family's homes because they can't survive because of this debt that they are strapped with because most jobs in America, 65% require college degrees. So in order to make it in this economy, you have to have a college degree. And now all of a sudden they're being punished for trying to pull themselves up by their bootstraps, put themselves through school. It's not like we're just slacking, going to school, you know, fucking around. Like when I went to school, I was working two jobs, living on my own, trying to make ends meet. I was a full-time student, a full-time worker. Like this is hard work. And still, it didn't lead to success for almost everyone. But if we were doing the same thing when that Fox host's parents we're younger. If we were living in that economy, we would be successful. So times have changed and you have to adapt to accommodate newer generations who were fucked over after college was no longer subsidized as heavily when the economy changed. Now, going back to the start of the clip, I want to touch on that again because they brought up how Democrats are against student debt cancellation and they're trying to use them for propaganda purposes so they can essentially make it seem as if it's that much more unreasonable because here's a couple of Democrats who are against it. Now, that is correct. These Democrats are being used as useful idiots by the right, and it's because they're currently in battleground states, and they think that if they come out against Biden here, then that's going to work out well for them. Now, I'll explain to you why they're wrong, but let's get to what they said. This is from HuffPost. Quote, as someone who's paying off my own family student loans, I know the costs of higher education are too high, Representative Tim Ryan said in a statement Wednesday. And while there's no doubt that a college education should be about opening opportunities, waiving debt for those already on a trajectory to financial security sends the wrong message. Go fuck yourself, Tim Ryan. Uh, Senator Catherine Cortez Masto, who is seen as one of the most vulnerable Senate Democrats fighting for another term, doesn't agree with Biden's decision to opt for a one-time payment since it doesn't address the root causes of the college affordability issue. Quote, we should be focusing on passing my legislation to expand Pell Grants for lower income students, targeting loan forgiveness to those in need, and actually make college more affordable for working families, she said. Representative Chris Pappas, another Democrat in the battleground district, said Biden should have gone through Congress to get student loan cancellation done. So we have Tim Ryan, who's just flat out against it. 
we have Catherine Cortez Masto, another Democrat who isn't necessarily against it explicitly, but she just thinks that the baby steps that Biden took were too big and she wants to take even smaller baby steps. And then Chris Pappas is basically saying, oh, well, it should have just gone through Congress. So in other words, he doesn't think that it should happen because it wouldn't pass if it went through Congress because the Senate would not approve that because you guys haven't gotten rid of the filibuster. Not you and the House, Chris Pappas, to be clear, but senators haven't done that. So, you know, this is a really bold strategy if you are currently in a battleground state because guess what? Student loan forgiveness is extremely popular. And if Biden wanted to increase his standing with the base even more, he should have gone bigger and canceled $50,000 worth of student debt. This is a winning policy. From The Hill, a recent national poll conducted by progressive think tank Data for Progress just before Biden's announcement found 60% of 1,425 respondents agreed the federal government should eliminate all or some student loan debt for every borrower compared to 34% who said the government should not forgive the loans and 6% who said they didn't know. The poll was conducted between August 19th through the 21st online and has a margin of error of plus or minus three percentage points. Now, this includes 81% of Democrats and Believe it or not, 45% of Republicans. Yeah. So these dumbass Democrats decided in their infinite wisdom, in their battleground states where they're struggling, that, you know what, this overwhelmingly popular issue, I'm going to be on the side of the people who are against this popular issue. I'm going to side against the overwhelming majority of the American population. That'll help me get elected. Are you fucking stupid? 81% of Democrats support this. 45% of Republicans support this. Like, if you want to galvanize your base, get young people out to vote for you, you don't attack Biden for doing the one good thing that he's done for young people in months. You actually applaud him and you call on him to go even further. But these dipshits, they don't understand good politics. And this is why they're struggling. For example, Tim Ryan is losing to fake populist psychopath J.D. Vance, according to RCP polling averages. And rather than trying to out populist J.D. Vance, he runs in the opposite direction and sides against a popular policy issue. I mean, you have to be so fucking stupid to be against this. It's like coming out against apple pie. It's like coming out against legalizing weed. Like, how dumb do you have to be to see the polls and say, I'm going to get on the losing side, the 34% of Americans who are against this? Jesus Christ. So, you know, look, Republicans are going to use these idiot Democrats for propaganda purposes, because if Democrats are opposed to it, well, then it must be unreasonable. But do you want to know what I say to that? Fuck these Democrats. They're fucking stupid, just as dumb as you Republicans. But in this instance, with J.D. Vance versus Tim Ryan, J.D. Vance is a legitimate psychopath. Now, I think that he's probably playing a character for purposes of pandering to MAGA chuds, but it doesn't matter. If he's running this populist campaign and he's edging out ahead of you, you don't do the opposite of populism. You run to what the people want, but Democrats just don't get it. But overall, anyone who doesn't get it, you know, they're in for a wake-up call because Americans support this, young people support this, and there is nothing that will get more young people off their asses than policies like this. And so if a politician tells me that they support what Biden did but want to go further, they have my unconditional support. I may not agree with them on other issues, but this is one of the core issues that is plaguing an entire generation. And now Gen Z, and it's not just like millennials and Zoomers to be fair, Z uh, there are boomers, there are Gen Xers who have student debt. So this is popular. So wake up, stop pretending as if this is unpopular. And if you took out a PPP loan that was forgiven, I'm looking at you, Prager. I'm looking at you, Steven Crowder and Marjorie Green. You in particular should probably shut the fuck up. Were you acting like a Beta, 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 beta,